In this video, I wanted to explore the idea of using dynamic text in GeoGebra. Okay, so that lets us put little explanations into our sketchpad and highlight certain things that are happening, perhaps quantities that are related, so forth and so on. So I've got a, a blank slate here in GeoGebra. So uh, let, let's do a little illustration of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we're going to need a right triangle, so let me start out by doing the construction for that. So I'll get two points here. Um, okay, let me do points A and B. And let me get a segment joining those two points. If I want a right triangle, I'll need to use the perpendicular line tool. So I want a line through point A perpendicular to this, and then we'll put another point on that perpendicular line. So if we go to the Move tool, we can see, okay, no matter what we do to this segment, our line stays perpendicular to it. We can move C along that line, but we can't pull C off the line. Okay. And I will go ahead and let me... Uh, I'm going to hide the, hide the line that I just made. I don't really need that. I think I want the segment to stay there. I think I want that to stay there. And just for, just for funsies, I'm going to throw in a, uh, another segment right there. And then I'll use my polygon tool down here to take a... B, C, A, and actually make my right triangle. Okay, so I've got a right triangle. That's wonderful. Uh, now, what, I, what do I want? I want uh, squares on the sides of my right triangle. So I'm going to once again go to the now, I'm going to go to the regular polygon tool, okay? And it says, select two points, enter the number of sides. I want squares on each of the sides. So, let's start with this, A, B. And I want four sides, great. Okay, now, I really wanted that not, not covering the triangle, but on the other side. So... Not, not really a problem. I'm just going to select the regular polygon tool again and select the vertices in the other order. And now the, the square is going the other way. So uh, let me go to the move tool here. And we can see if I, if I change things up. I've got that square uh, right there. Okay. And I'm going to do that for uh, the remaining two sides. So back to the regular polygon tool, and let's put the side here. Four sides, okay, did it the wrong way again. Where did I select C and then A, so let's try this. Let's do A and then C, and that's facing the way I want. So it looks like I've got to go kind of right-hand rule this. Okay, and then I bet if I select C and then B, it'll give me that out there. Okay. So, I, I don't... Let me... Uh, let me go and... I don't want the names on all these, so I don't want labels on these vertices here. It's dirtying up my picture, so... Okay, it, 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 stop doing this, buddy. Okay, let's go to the Move tool. This vertex J, I don't want that there. Back to the Move tool. I must have had some other tool selected. That was why it was acting funny. Okay. So we just don't want labels on any of these. Any of these extra vertices. In fact, 
there was probably a quicker way to do this. I could have just gone into the uh, algebra window and just made those new points all go away. Um, anyway, okay. So now I, I've got my picture looking the way I want it to. And remember, you can move your labels around too. So if you want to kind of clean those up a little bit, you can do that. And of course, as we see, we change the size of the segment. It changes the size of the squares. Okay, great. So what I want to do is Okay, now notice I, I kind of right-click on that polygon right there. I want to show the label, but I want to show the value. Okay, so when you have a polygon, the value component is going to be the area of the polygon. Okay, so I'll do that to each of these squares. So we'll say show label and we'll select value. And then same thing here. Show label, and we'll select the value of that polygon. Great. Okay, so we notice that, okay, look at what we've got here. We've got this square has an area of 4.7. This square has an area of 10.8. Add them together. 4.7 plus 10.8 is, if, well, okay, I think there might be some round off error going on there. Um, but... Okay, looks like it's a little bit better there. Okay, great. So if you total out the area of these two squares, you get this one right here. Okay, so I want some text in here that kind of points that out to somebody who's looking at this figure. If we were to share our work, we want to let the viewer know what the point is. What are we trying to illustrate with this thing? Okay. So, a couple things. I'm going to need to do this little preliminary thing here. I'm just going to input a number, and I think I'm going to call it S for sum. So, over here in the algebra window, here's what I'm going to do. I'm go I've got uh, a new variable defined. I've got S1 equals poly1 plus poly2. Okay, poly1 is the polygon on side A, B, which is right down here. Poly 2 is the polygon on side A, C, which is right here. Okay, and remember the values of those two variables are the areas. Okay, so uh, what I'm doing here in the variable S1, I am taking the total of the areas. So, uh, so we've got that. And now I'm going to go back to the uh, Tools menu, and I'm going to go to Text, and we get to put this text anywhere we want. So I just clicked right there, and it popped up this menu. Okay, I'm going to go to the Advanced menu here, because this is kind of what I, what I need to do. Okay, so here I can, I can start typing in my, um, what, what I want. So... The sum of the areas of the squares on the legs of our right triangle. And you can put little LaTeX codes in here, A, B, C. You can put that in math mode. And notice it... Hmm, okay, I thought it was going to come up there, but... Uh, Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. Of our right triangle, ABC is, okay, now, down here, you see that little menu there? It looks like the GeoGebra symbol. You can choose variables. Okay, I want poly1 plus poly2. Okay, let, let me just put this in right now. Okay, and... We can see that as I move my vertices around, okay, the values there change. OK, 
Okay, so let me go and edit this a little bit more. Equals, okay, now, this is the reason I had to go into the algebra window and put this new variable in here. You can't really do computations in the text, but you can do it here in the algebra pane. So equals, and let me go, and I'll just select S1 off of this list. Okay, oh, my OK button is way down there. All right, uh, let me see, can I just do like a, can I make this like two lines? Can I force it to, okay, that'll kind of consolidate it a little bit. It was kind of running away there. Okay, so we can see here that as we manipulate the triangle, all the text kind of changes. Okay, so, and we can see, okay, yes, the total is coming out right. We can just check it in our head. And let's go and uh, do another little text box there with, with some more dynamic text. Let's go ahead and put it right underneath it. The area of the square on the hypotenuse is, and once again, I'll go to the advanced menu and I will just select the variable name from that list, select poly three, we'll select okay. And we can see our illustration is kind of blatantly pointing out that if you take the area of these two squares and add them together, you get the area of this square right here, which is part of what the Pythagorean theorem is saying. Okay, so uh, dynamic text is very helpful if you want to emphasize something in your drawing, okay, because, or your construction, I guess I should say. So we've constructed our right triangle, we put squares on each of the legs, and we wanted to emphasize that the sum of the area of these two squares is equal to the area of this square. And we use dynamic text to do it. Okay, so in your tools menu, you're, you might have to click more to get these options. You gotta scroll way down here under media. Right, this is the standard tools menu. Okay, so you gotta go to more to get access to the text. And then you select Wherever on the graphics view you want the text to go, once you've done that, you can input your text here. And the dynamic part of the text is when you go to the advanced tab and you select stuff from these variables here on this GeoGebra menu. Okay, and let me just cancel that because I don't want any new text. But you can see here, this part of the text is static. It just says the sum of the, that's always going to be the same. But this right here, that's dynamic, the 4.9, because if I change B, that changes. In fact, that changes all this stuff. Right? If I change this, that changes. Okay, so that's the dynamic part when you're choosing those variables to display here in this menu. So a great way to emphasize the features that you want your audience to notice.